recorder is running. Hello, everybody. Let's try this again. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, by the way, I appreciate it. Ed, thank you for having me here. Uh, I do appreciate it. And I welcome questions from anyone. I, I absolutely welcome uh, questions during the presentation if there's something you need to take a look at. Make sure if you ask a question, though, um, and if it's a question about a chart, please put the ticker symbol in there, okay? Um, so, how many people feel that they are, uh, for the most part, comfortable with, there we go, with um, chart patterns such, you know, such as, um, here's what I'm talking about, you know, chart patterns where we rally up, we pull back right in there. So, you know, that continuation pattern, something like that, uh, something like uh, an ascending triangle, maybe something like a wedge, a symmetrical triangle, um, things like uh, maybe a flag. Uh, everyone feel like you're comfortable with that? And, and I think everybody is. That's not what today is going to be about. But I do think that a person has to recognize these type of setups. Um, I do think you need to recognize them. And what I'm going to like to do today is I'd like to stick to a naked chart. So just a chart with price action on it. And the reason to do that is we want to follow what price action is doing. But we only want to look at price action within a certain area. And it's an area that I call the buy zone. Now, th this is my buy zone, okay? You, I don't know if you can see that right there. It's titled buy zone. Um, just because a ticker symbol comes through the alert window, it doesn't mean it is a buy for, say, Kevin. Um, it doesn't mean it's a buy for, say, tracks. But it may be a buy for me. Uh, it may be a buy for MB there, but not for me. Um, so, you know, we, we have to have our likes and dislikes. And by the way, this is adjustable. I'll show you what's in there in a second. And I'll show you what I'm looking at. And uh, it's, it's totally adjustable, all right, to your world. Um, so... Let's take a look at a few charts, and I've got it. I've got it set to all, uh, all, um, all alerts that are filtered through uh, live trading alerts, and I may have to tone that down just because it's moving a bit much. But we'll we'll take a look at that. So just you know, and we're not going to cherry pick. We'll just take them from the top, you know, when they come up. Um, I mean, you take a look at that chart, I think anybody would look at it and say, man, that thing has been consolidating quite nice. It's either a buy for the buyers that like consolidation or it's a buy on a breakout. Uh, to me, that's a beautiful looking chart. We've got a nice trend. It's doing everything we want it to do. Um, let's take NYT. Look at that. NYT. That is a nice chart. And uh, again, th this is where the scanner, it just makes me smile sometimes because it's doing exactly what we want it to do or what we ask it to do, uh, depending on your, your likes or dislikes, and it can be adjusted. Um, so um, what I call the buy zone would be say, in this area right here. Uh, we'll see. Let's look at another one, NTUM. See, the buy zone for me would be in this area. And I'm going to put, I'm going to start over here and put a line, a buy zone area right there. Because the buy zone uh, for different traders and even for me at different times of the day maybe or different market conditions or depending on the stock itself, um, I may may wait for a breakout or I may buy inside that buy zone. Um, let's look at, uh, I thought I saw C. 
There we go. Look at C. Uh, so now here's the type of chart where we have a, uh, let's change the color here. There we go. The type of chart where we have a trend, we have a pullback here, and now we have that trend starting to work again. Well, that might be just what I'm looking for. That might be exactly what James is looking for. Might not be what MB is looking for. So there, I want you to keep in mind, it's very adjustable to stay within your area. Um, I've also noticed something about my personal trading is that I like a certain area of a chart. Um, my area of a chart could be anywhere in that area right there. Where I don't like to trade is, say, down here, um, excluding the rounded bottom breakout, okay? Uh, that different category. But what I, what I don't necessarily like is a chart that has been uh, down, and let's just assume this moves down and down. I don't particularly like trading right there. I would rather have a trend starting to work up and I'm not necessarily into catching um, you know catching that that turn right there. I'm not against it, just not my thing. There's there are scanner alerts windows for that, but I would rather have this trending just like this is trending um, and then look for those trades that fall in uh, the buy zone, the buy zone right in there, just like these are in the buy zone. Um, McCormick, McCormick is one that I've been watching in the buy zone, in the buy zone. So, um, Ed, I, I forget now, can you tell me, did you just recently create the near? Um, I don't know if it's been there. I don't know every alert that's that's in the scanner. I, I don't use every alert. Uh, I don't know of every alert. Uh, but I know that we were chatting and I wanted fairly recently, okay. And I was sharing with him an idea and I, I, I had, and he said, well, hey, take a look at this. Um, started looking at it and like, hey, that solves a whole lot of problems. And uh, we shared it with a few other people, and I know one other trader that uses it and really likes it. In fact, he, he one of his suggestions for a topic today was, in fact, this alert. Uh, and if he's here, I'll show him what I've done with this, and he may like that. And you guys may like this. First, I want, um, is there anybody here that does not have the scanner? Anyone here that does not have the scanner? So everyone does. Okay. All right. Uh, Kevin, uh, I think that is there a 14 period linear? Uh, Ed, maybe help with that. Um, uh, hi, Jason. Thank you for sharing this morning. I am on a 14 day trial. Cool. Uh, of LTA started using TC2000 as well. Wanted to understand how the scanner differs from the easy scan tool in TC2000. TC2000 doesn't give you live, on the spot, on the time, you know, right now alerts, uh, Jason. And if you use them side by side, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, I use TC2000 myself. I love it. I absolutely think it is the best charting software in the world. There's no, in my opinion. But it does not have a live scanner that... Uh, tells you right now, you know, just a ticker symbol when they're moving. So, you know, you can make that decision, uh, but you'll see what I mean when you set them side by side. Um, let's see, Tim is asking, uh, did you say the near buy zone? No, yes and no, Tim. I'm going to share about it right now, okay? Um, yes and no. So, what I've done is uh, I first started creating this scan one at a time, and then I've switched it over to one scan, one simple 
simple scan. And uh, again, let's, I want to look at just a couple more and then I'll show you what's in this. Look at that. I, I, I just, I just want to point out how every one of them, they're in that buy zone. And you, you as the trader, you've got to decide, is this the chart pattern, the overall chart pattern? For instance, um, here we are with this chart pattern. Is that something you're wanting to trade? Uh, and you might. I'm not for it or against it. I'm just, you know, you've got to decide when you look at the charts, is that something you're going to trade? Um, you know, is this a trade? Or are you going to wait for this to break out? In which case, this might not be the trade for you, but it's doing exactly what we've asked it to do. Um, look at that. See, this is, for me, every single one we've looked at is a possible buy. Is a possible buy. Uh, but you have the trader, you've got to decide if that overall chart pattern. All right, enough with that. Let's go take a look at inside of this. Um, there we go. Let's take a look at the inside. And let me, let me just move that down. Okay. So here's the first thing I've done. And please believe me that all of this is adjustable. All of this is changeable to fit your particular type of trading. So what I've simply asked it to do is I want the 17 EMA. And again, you can use any moving average you want. I want it greater than the last five candles. So that puts the 17 in at least the right hand side of it in some sort of a trend upwards. Okay. I also want um, a bullish candle. So I want a white candle. Since I use white and black candles, this would be a bullish candle right here. This would not. So Although this chart right here might might qualify, partially qualify for the uh, buy zone, it would never alert because it's not a bullish candle. So here's what I've done here. I've realized that when I buy stocks, I like to buy stocks in an area. You guys have heard me talk about that hundreds of times, if not thousands of times. I look for a buy area. And the buy area can be um, relatively wide. So it could be here, could be here. But one thing I've noticed is that wherever I'm buying, it all meets some kind of qualification. For instance, I want a longer moving at or a yeah, longer moving average trending, such as the 17. And that's what this is. I want that longer moving average trending. And then I want price to pull back to the 17 or to something or to something else. Or, you know, it, it, it could be to this area. It could be to this area. Uh, it could be to this area. I mean, you can put as many little possibilities in there that you want. But it's always within this area. So really what I'm looking for is a chart that is trending up with a with a and I'm using the 17 for that trend uh, and then I'm looking for a chart that rallies uh, and can so, somehow it moves up you know it doesn't matter if it's a short-term rally or a, or a long-term smooth move up but then I'm looking for it to consolidate to pull back to pull back more Regardless, this area right here is this area. And these lines right here, they represent moving averages. And I've noticed that it, it ranges from maybe one moving average to another moving average. And now let's look at those, what I have just picked out. So if I, if I go, go after the near above average and we go look at the parameters, well, it's a no-brainer. I'm going to put the T-line in, right? So I want the exponential T-line. And I'll share this with everybody. You don't have to frantically copy this down. Okay, we'll, we'll share it with everyone. Um, 
And right here, I'm. this represents 1.5%. So if this stock, whatever stock we're looking at, is within 1.5% of the T-line, it will show up in this scan um, above the T-line. Okay, so everything is above. Let's cancel that. Whoop, 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 whoop. I shouldn't have done that. Let's open that back up. So now let's go to the second one. So what I've done here is added another one, and now I'm using the 13 exponential. Now, please feel free. You can put any moving averages in there you want. I just sort of arbitrarily picked a few that seem to always be in my buy zone. So the exponential 13, again, 1.5%. It can be 1.5% above the exponential 13, and it will be in this alert. Now, it will not alert unless it makes a new day high and it's a white candle. Um, the third one I have is the 10 simple. So I'm now looking at the 10 simple, the close, and it has to be within 1.5% of the 10 simple. Um, Somebody here, they, they, in the other room, they pointed out um, SLV, I think. Uh, and they, they said that, uh, look at, well, wait a minute. Maybe, whoops, I'm not there yet. Hold on, hold on. So here's the 17 that I have. I want the 17 trending. Um, or no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. So here I'm using uh, the 17 exponential and it has to be within 1.5%, uh, or maximum 1.5% away from the 17 exponential. Uh, these here, I'm not going to go over these. You guys all know what these are. This is just the basic trend, okay? I added, here's where that SLV came in. Uh, somebody in the Hit Run Candlesticks trading room said, uh, SLV, they're real happy with it. It's working. Well, it, it made me think, because SLV would not be in this area. SLV would be up here. So I went and checked it out, and it happens to be close to the 5 uh, simple. So I just added the 5 simple. Now, guys, gals, traders, people, don't get all wound up what I have is magical, Okay. It's not. You, you can use whatever moving averages you want. In fact, I'm not sure that I'm going to keep this one in this alert window because that's too much of a discrepancy, but I thought I would put it out just to show it on one alert. So I might end up making two alerts where there's a buy zone that is a little bit lower, and then I'm, I may make a Another alert where the buy zone might be higher, meaning where that five, move, that moving average number five is up there. Something tighter like the, like the SLV is. SLV is way too far away from these other moving averages. So there might be two types of setup. But I thought I would put it on just to show you can do it all in one scan by, see how I have near... Uh, near or above the moving average, and notice how the OR is checked. OR this one, OR this one, OR this one, OR this one. So it, it, can qualif it, it may not qualify for one, but it qualifies for the other. It may not qualify for two, but it might qualify for one. And that keeps it in that buy zone. Does that make sense? So let's cancel this. And you'll see what I mean here. Let's just take a look at a few more of these now that you've, you've got kind of the, the just of what we're doing. There, anywhere in that area would fit. Um, SBSH, SW. Here we are. Here's one that's pulled back, and that would meet that quali those qualifications. Uh, AG, AG, right there. 
It meets those qualifications. One, one of the biggest problems um, I think a trader has is they run around looking for trades. And they spend too much time looking for the trade. Well, by, by sitting down with yourself and saying, this is a strategy I want to consider. And the strategy could be, we could call this a moving average bounce, multiple moving average bounces. We can call it near the buy zone. It's all the same, okay? The truth of it is, if I look at one of our alerts that is a bounce versus an alert that's near, I, you're splitting hairs. The near, I think, is kind of cool because, well, you could do this with the others, but it just gives me that opportunity to be close and that's all I need. Um, and really, we didn't even think of this. I didn't think of this until Ed shared with me that we had this alert. So uh, when I started using it and I started thinking about it, and then I started realizing, well, every one of my buy zones are near those moving averages. So uh, again, what I'm looking for is, is a trend, a good trend, and then I'm looking for those moving averages up there where price comes down to. You know, it just price finds its, finds its place in there. Then the buyers start buying it. And that's where we start looking. For instance, AG. AG fits the qualifications. Um, SWK. This is a chart I would be interested in trading. SWK. There we go. You can see how, look at that consolidation. Well, if we looked at moving averages, they would all be there. They would all be right. Well, I shouldn't say all. It would qualify for one. And looking at that chart pattern tells me I would be very interested in this if we started to show some positive trading. So when we see that coming up on the, on the alert, we can take a look at it, and if there's positive trading, such as maybe today starts breaking out, that would be a stock I might today want to take a look at. Also, if it's in the buy area, depending on the stock. Whew, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave, can you, can you work with me? Oh, Ed, talking to Ed. Okay. Uh, Tim, please remind me about checked boxes. Okay, good, good question. So what, what we have to do is there has to be some trues. See how we're true? So the trend, I want that to be true. That's not an or. And you can have multiple trends in there. That it has to be true. I want a white candle. I want that true. I don't want, there's no if, ends, or buts about it. I want a white candle. Now, when we're looking at the, say, the, the near the moving average, because we're asking it to be near this one, that one, or the other one, that's where we're going to come in and we're going to put a check mark near, I'm sorry, a check mark in the or. So it can be or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Now, I added this one after I did this. Otherwise, I would have put them all together. We want the bull trend. We want that to be a fact. So mark that true, which it should come up that way. Uh, the bull trend 17, we want that to be a fact. So put a check mark there to make sure it's true. Some things we want true, like the trend and the candle. Um, and then some things we want or. I want it, uh, say, the five. this was the five simple, I remember that. Or the 13 exponential, or the 17, or the 10 simple, or the 8 exponential. Just within that area. <laughs> it is working hard. Yes, it is. Yes, it is working hard to do all that. Yes, sir. 
So let, let's say, let's say somebody says, you know, I want to look for charts that it's near the 50-day simple. Now, that's not my personal bag of tea. Unless, unless maybe the 20 simple is with it, all right? Or maybe there's a faster moving average. So let me see if I can draw this out. Uh, blue. So say this is the 50-day simple. And green, my green is always uh, the 20. So now let's say the 20, and let's do this a pen. So now let's say the 20 has come down and we're near the 50, right? You see where this might be going? You could say, you could adjust that scan that you want. Uh, maybe you want it true. This one may not be an or. This would be a true. True, I want it to be within X percent of the 50. And true... I want it to be within X percent of the 20. That would put those two relatively close together, whatever percent you're looking at. So you, you see how that might, might go? See how you can use that true? Um, yeah, I was just thinking because one of the, where I was very the very first time I was introduced to the trap was by a gentleman that was very instrumental helping me trade years ago and he had a trade and that's this is how all the traps came to be because of this one trade the 50-day simple moving average the 20 simple maybe like this and then he was buying close to the 50 and looking for a trade up to that 20 and that was his that was his trade so basically a 50 day simple moving average trap well i can see how you can make that using the near near the 50 by x percent could be half a percent for that matter whatever you want to whatever you want to use and then uh you can set where price is under the 20 by x percent because if you go go look at the alerts you'll see there's above and there's below things like that so anyway i'm gonna have fun with that but right now i'm pretty darn happy with this right here for money making look at that uh somebody asked me you, you maybe it was you jason uh you've got tc2000 tc2000 and don't get me wrong I'll swear up and down about TC2000. Don't tell the Warden brothers. But if they were to raise the price, I'd pay more. Okay? But don't tell them that. I don't want to pay more. I love it. But TC2000 does not do that for you. Uh, TC2000 does not do this for you. TC2000 does not do this for you. It just doesn't. Okay? So, um, uh, Let's see, you mentioned in the room yesterday, if just by focusing on the simple V-stop trap uh, scan, we can be happy with the results. Is that uh, just the number one? Yes, it is, number one. I'm catching myself uh, with too many scan windows open. Yes, sir. So you, you need to stop doing that, all right? Look, we're, we're only human. And if we buy... Uh, if we buy something with um, uh, five different things you can touch, that doesn't mean you have to touch all five things. And just because I think you can have 20 alert windows open, it doesn't mean you need to have 20 alert windows open. In fact, I would argue that you don't need that many, and I would argue you'll be a better trader if you didn't have that many. Stick with what you know best. Stick with what you know best. And if that, you know, if that uh, number one, which that's what this is right here, Lulu's coming up on number one. 
If that's what you know best, then trade that. You don't need anything else. You really do not need anything else. Um, Home Depot here is coming up on that number one. What other scans do you need? Now, if somebody tells themselves, but I want the very best one, here's a newsflash for you. You are never going to get the very best one. There's always going to be somebody that will get a better trade than you. There will always be somebody get a better entry than you. And do you know what? That other person could be saying that same thing and you can be the one getting the best entry and the best stock, the best trade of the day. If you just focus on what you do best, which maybe it is that number one, that V-stop trap, just focus on that. That That is more than you can possibly do. Uh, and it will give you more great trades. So, um, so more is not better here. More is not better. And, and the, way, the way to figure out what you want is on a piece of paper or print out some charts that you like, chart patterns that you like. Do you like this chart? Well, print out a dozen of them. Make some notes on them, and that's all you want. Maybe, um, you know, PM. That's the, you know, and these are all trap trades, by the way. You want the trap trade. Well, if you like that trade, then only trade those trades. Don't try to trade anything else. So for fun here, I'm going to go over to this chart and I'm going to put my trap in there. And I'm actually, we'll leave it like that. So I love, personally love the trap trade, okay? I think it is one of the best ones out there. But let's take a look at how this compares. Trap trade. Not all of them will be there, okay? Not, not all of them will be there. But a lot of them will be there. Note that I, I have said that I like a certain type of chart pattern. This is just another way to find it, but it's still a trap trade. See how all these are a trap trade, every single one of them, because that's where I like to be. So here's a couple different ways you can find that trap trade. Um, and, in, and in B, you, the, the, the trick is to write down what you're looking for. Decide what you're wanting. Once you decide what you want, then you can build, adjust, ask Ed, he can help you with it, build, adjust, one, two, maybe three alert windows that fits your, your trading. But I think that's, that, is, that is huge to do that. Huge. Sorry, I'm, kinda, I'm still in some trades. Uh, and I'm kind of looking around here real quick, making sure everything is, is working out pretty good. Uh, for a minute, folks, bear with me. I need to go look at my target. Uh, I'm going to be taking target off the table pretty quick here, uh, up 34%. So I've got it on a 15-minute chart on another window that I'm watching it. Uh, so I'm going to be taking that off here shortly. Yeah, it's hit my line here. I'm, I'm not going to, I will not hold the last half of it today will not just say it okay are there any questions any questions sorry i kind of rambled on a little longer than i kind of wanted there take the money that's right tracks i plan to i took some off yesterday off that target um and i'm gonna take the balance off today uh, so this has been a very nice trade very nice trade Also, I, I want to point out that when you're looking at a window, your watch list is important. Um, your, your watch list is, is important, but 
just because, say, I have a watch list I use, it doesn't mean it's the watch list you should you should use. I, see, <laughs> Rick is asking. Um, any watch list you use is going to put some some stocks in whatever stock chart position you you put them in. Okay. Now this happens to be set to all t all tickers in 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 LTA. Now I never use this. Okay. I did it today just because we'd have plenty to look at. Um, you know, if somebody was just to trade the S and P five hundred, just the S and P five hundred, just those right there you would be amazed how many trades comes up. Now, like I said, if you were trying to be, I, I hear this from people and I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This irritates the crap out of me. Um, I hear people show up somewhere, doesn't matter where, um, and they boast about a stock they, they, they're in and it's up, um, say 58 percent okay they boast about that and that that would kick most people's butt today all right I, i'll bet you there's not anybody in this room all right one person maybe where you are in a position that you're up 58 percent in one stock you entered today but there is nothing that frosts my butt more than when i hear this kind of stuff and I go back and listen or go back and look at the chart and nowhere did they say they were in the chart where they bought it. That just, that just fries me. Um, you know, tell us you bought it, then brag about it. Otherwise, don't brag about it. Now, the, the point I'm trying to make here is there's always going to be somebody, always going to be somebody that's going to hit something big. And you're not. And maybe they look at a, a list that has 10,000 stocks on it. Well, if you want to look for a list with 10,000 stocks on it, and if you want to look at a list that half those stocks are junk, because a lot of these big money makers in one day, they're junk. They're junk charts. You wouldn't trade them. You, you wouldn't buy one and give to your kids because they're junk. But to trade it for a day trade might be the thing you want to do. So when we're looking at a list, keep in mind that to start with, if you were going to look at everything, you're missing the boat on trading. So you want to keep your risk re relatively narrow. When I say relatively narrow, could be only 200 stocks on it. Could be only 100 on it. But most people want more stocks on there because you want that you know you're 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 hoping for that that killer trade that one that's going to go 58 percent on you <laughs> we all want that but you will you will die of starvation hunting for it so if you were out in the woods trying to bring trying to bring some food in to your family you and your family would die of starvation looking for these so if you if you go with a, a a stable list and this is just the s p 500 look at that there's there's aes how many more charts do you need aes was rocking look at swk how many more charts do you need i love that chart how about cag there's there's three charts I could make an argument to buy right this second. And we don't need some some crazy list anywhere, okay? Now, with that said, uh, if you go to the live trading alerts, uh, let me find uh, here, go to Google and uh, I've got it bookmarked here. If you go to live trading alerts, and if you look under resources and ticker list, so resources and ticker list, you'll find lists. Uh, these are some lists that I use. Uh, combine them all, and I've got I've got other windows made just for 
uh, say pharma stocks um, or oil stocks or gold and silver stocks. But I also have them in a bigger list. Uh, but you can also, like I said, just trade the S&P 500. Or you can look at the CBOE Top 400. This is updated every month with the, the CBOE 400. You can look at just the NASDAQ, which who's leading this market right now? Why not just trade the NASDAQ? Uh, if you want to trade the, you know, the Russell 1,000 or 2,000, here you are, the Q components. So you, there's so much here you can choose from. You just have to decide what you want to do. That's all. Now, if you'll notice here, we have this set to the S&P 500, and we're only 21 stocks are right now in the buy zone. That's it. They're in this buy zone. It, it will alert over here when it makes a new day high. Now, I can come over here. I'm gonna, you can click on this right here, but I'm going to click somewhere else. Or you come over here, and I don't know if you can actually tell that number, but it's a num the number 24. It says there's 24 stocks that's on the list right now that they will alert in here if they make a new day high. You can click on that, and you can bring up, bring up, huh, bring up, my mouse is not, there we go. You can bring up those stocks, oops, I did something else over there, there we go. You can bring up all those stocks, and you can uh, double click on it, double click on it, there we go, and you can see it'll bring those charts up, and uh, let's see, we already looked at AES, there's Amazon. Amazon is in that neighborhood, in the neighborhood, but it's not alerting because it's not making a new day high. Uh, BBY, there's BBY. So if you wanted to look for stocks that are not making a new day high, but maybe a pullback intraday, this is how you would do it right here. Um, you would look for stocks, go, go to the stocks that qualify, but are not making a uh, new day high. Sorry, I had to look at my screens right in there. So, does that make sense? Oops. Okay, so... Yeah, and, and Rick, watch lists are a tricky thing because... We're human, and, you know, we think we have to have everything. Um, every whistle and bell, every, you know, I, by God, I paid for it, I want it, right? Not so much. Um, you need to back, back your list off a little bit. A lot of people, they fail because their list is too big. You, you think, well, how can that make you fail? fail? And the answer is because you're too busy looking for stuff, and... A lot of times if your list is too big, what happens is you find a lot of nice charts, but they're stocks that's not worth a darn. You want to you wanna have quality, okay? Um, that's why we have, or that's why Ed has um, uh, stock lists like the CBOE 400. I mean, that comes right from the CBOE, the top traded um, uh option trades um, at that time and it's updated every month that's why the s p 500 i mean one would think that if you're on the s p 500 well you must be a fairly good company overall you're not junk um you know the same if you're looking for dow stocks stick with with those watch lists stick with those watch lists um and I, I find the S&P 500 is a solid, solid, uh, solid chart, a watch list. So, so anyway, um, and by the way, too, the, you can see that this hasn't moved. The reason it hasn't moved is because there's nothing happening. We, we don't want to force a trade, and if there's nothing there, that means there's nothing there. 
That's exactly what that means. So here's what we do. And I know every single person here has done this. I know it is. All right, nothing's moving here. Okay, so now I'm going to go find my other, I'm going to go get grab another alert. And if that alert is not working, then I'm going to go grab another one. And if that one's not working, I'm going to get another one. You see where this is going? Because we have it in our mind that, by God, I'm going to trade today. Why? Because I paid for it. So keep in mind, you don't have to trade every day. Um, you don't have to buy a trade every day. You don't have to sell a trade every day. Um, you do have to manage your positions every day. That I think you have to do. But you don't have to um, trade every day. You just don't have to do that. Sorry, there's a lot of chat here I realized I was not paying attention to. Um, let's see, Tim, I prefer stocks that are not moving above or below the T-line every other day. True, Tim. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, Gerald, can you show a NASDAQ five minute just for fun? Uh, sure. Let's uh, change this here and we'll put that uh, NASDAQ, NASDAQ. And um, let's change this to uh, five minute, five minute, five minute. There we go. And then we're going to put all, make them all that way. And then we're going to rescan. Might take it a minute to, we're really asking it to do a lot here. And then I think we want to change this to five minutes. So there's actually four charts that fit that qualification. Now keep in mind, I've asked some of this trending stuff that doesn't, I've asked for it to do trends that are just not cool on the five minute chart, okay? So you're only going to see a few. Uh, some of the trends I'm using are not made for five minute. They're made for daily. Uh, but there are four. So let's, uh, we'll see what we have. As soon as they come up right here, I'll click on them and we'll take a look at them. Uh, yes, tracks. Less can be more. And I urge that. Tracks, when you're bored, you change your trend line. You know, um, when I'm bored, I go eat something. I, I don't, I try not to fool with the scanner. Uh, it usually doesn't pay, so I just go try to eat something. That'll do it. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, Vnet. Vnet, there we go. So this is a daily chart. Here's Vnet. Let's go to a five-minute, and there's Vnet. It's doing what we've asked. Uh, CRNC, doing what we've asked. Oh, remember, too, I'm on the S&P 500, too. Uh, so they're going to be limited. There's uh, our pay. It's doing what we've asked. So uh, so I, I think if you were asking, can this work on five minute? Absolutely. I would adjust the trend though. I think I would. I think I would. I'd have to play with that. And I don't use a five minute, so it'd be hard for me to tell you what to use on that. Uh, but it wouldn't be hard to come up with. Okay, any questions? Any questions here? And then we're coming up on an hour. We don't want a marathon, so we'll we'll cut this off. Okay, so uh, I see a few more people have come in here, and I asked a question when we first started. How many people here uh, don't have the scanner and you're just here looking for information? Um, a few people shouted out, which they knew maybe what I was where I was going with this. Uh, that they just started the 14-day trial. And uh, um, Ed, with live trading alerts there, uh, has created a 14-day trial. So if you're interested in just trying it, it's free. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. For those that don't have the scanner, uh, If um, I'm going to put this out on a video. And if you look uh, below the video, you'll see that there will be a link for a 14-day trial um, for the live trading alerts. Well worth it. Well worth it. All right. All righty here. Uh, let's go take a look at, I'm going to go back to the daily real quick. I'm going to go take a look at my target. 
And by the way, every trade I buy, every single trade I buy is because of the scanner. Um, I, it's, it's what I trade from. Um, I look at the scanner and when it's meeting, you know, when it's, when the scanner is doing what I asked it to do, uh, and it, and, and then a stock, well, here, we're not even going to look at this one anymore because this is set to five minute and we don't want to do that. So let's, let's take the number one. This is on the favorite list. Um, when I see a chart that's, that's triggering, then I want to go look at it and that's how I buy. So I might, I might look at uh, Home Depot. I'll take in consideration when earnings are. Eh, maybe I don't want to buy this close to earnings, or maybe it doesn't matter to me. Um, but then I just simply look at that chart pattern, and do I like it? Is it doing everything that I really want? The scanner is doing everything as far as what we've asked for. Yeah, it's doing everything that we've asked for, but there's things that I've not asked for, like, you know, what does it look like back here? Uh, is there resistance? Things like that. Uh, Neil there is saying, take a look at AMD. Yeah, that was bought today because of the scanner. Uh, that was bought because it was showing, uh, it was starting to break out. And AMD currently up 20, wow, 26.6%. Better pay attention to that. So, you know, do I like the scanner? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Joe is asking, thanks, Neil. Joe's asking, uh, how do I keep the scan window on the top of the chart? Good question. So if you left click inside the window here and you see where it says stay on top, just click on that and put a check mark by it and it'll stay on top. Uh, if you don't want it to stay on top, then click on it again, take the check mark away, and then it'll go behind every time. But if you want it to stay on top, just give it that check mark. Okay. All right. So I'm going to wind it up here and say goodbye to everybody. Uh, thanks again for being here today. I really, really appreciate it. We'll get this recording uh, over to Ed. Ed will get it posted. And um, Ed, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I want to thank again this nearby zone. I'm kind of digging this. I'm going to go back and change it all to the daily. Uh, and Neil there, uh, Neil there was, is somebody that's using this. And uh, yesterday he mentioned, boy, we need to take a better look at this because it's pulling up some nice charts. And he's right. And it's just a way to put chart, compress charts in your zone. And you just have to define what is your zone. And this can be set up where stocks are put in your zone. Uh, Melinda, I'll be putting this on YouTube and then Ed will be posting it on the live trading alerts uh, window here. Uh, on the YouTube, YouTube. Oh, let's see, YouTube, YouTube. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Um, but if you went to, oh, here it is right here. There it is. I'm going to post my YouTube channel here. Uh, you can pick it up. Uh, whoops. That was incorrect. Let's try this again. Huh. Copy. Paste. There we go. Huh. Still not right. Uh, if you go to type in youtube.com forward slash Rick Sadler. And that'll take you to the YouTube channel. I don't know why that's not working. Um, thank you, uh, Siku. Siku, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Tracks. Um, I bet you didn't know that the nearby zone scanner picks mostly four and five uh, character stocks. Watch list. Your other scanners pick up mostly three. That's confusing. I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, I bet you didn't know that the nearby zone scanner picks mostly four and five characters. 
Okay. I'm just going to say okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll just say okay. Uh, can you make a near? Yes, Neil, we will. Uh, we'll put it out there as a favorite. We'll try to get that done today. I do want to watch this a little bit because I make some might make some adjustments on those uh, moving averages. All right. You're, and tracks. you're talking about three or four letter stocks. I think that depends on what ticker, what, what list you're using. I think that's what it is. I think if, if that's what you're talking about. All right, folks, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Have a great day. Make some money today. It's a good day for it. See you later. <laughs>